All right, so this is the end result of today's video. I've got a uh, high voltage battery pack out of a Chevy Volt, completely, almost completely disassembled, and uh, one that is completely dis disassembled. Uh, but I'm kind of putting this, you know, disclaimer up front. Wanted to just make sure you're aware that when you open this, there is a lot of voltage uh, and amperage that's stored in these batteries. Uh, it's enough to um, hurt you very badly and or potentially even kill you. So they do sell a whole bunch of different personal protective equipment to handle these sorts of things. Um, but just know that basically anything metal inside this entire pack uh, is electrified and uh, if not handled properly um, can short circuit, can injure or kill you or can also start a pretty rowdy fire that you can't put out uh, because they're lithium ion. Um, so yeah, there's that. Anyways, uh, enjoy the rest of the video. All right, well, welcome to uh, this update of the electric GTM uh, project that I'm working on. Uh, still no car. Um, there's a Weirdly enough, another IS300 here, working on this for a friend, um, but definitely not getting back into the Lexus thing. Um, as you can see, I'm kind of full force into the Tesla stuff. Um, just like last update, we've got Tesla motor over there, a couple volt batteries. So this one has been uh, pulled out of the car, obviously, but is still completely intact. And then we've got uh, basically the insides over here so the three separate uh, units the long one makes up the T the top of the T I guess we'll call it and then of course the other two go into the front part uh, also in there is a bunch of wiring clearly and uh, this box here which is the BMS so the battery management system that's responsible for keeping the uh, batteries like charged basically the same, all the individual uh, cells and modules. So anyways, we're just gonna walk through taking this thing apart real quick. The, uh, it goes really fast actually. Very simple system. Whole bunch of these 10 millimeter bolts all the way around. So I'm gonna start with uh, taking those off. Uh, oh, I should, I guess, point out that this guy here on top, this is the OEM from the Volt, uh, it's like a fuse, it says 420 volt DC, uh, either way it only makes contact when it's in like this and push down, and then you can pull this out and uh, twist it, I guess some sorts, to keep it from, you know, making contact. So when that's not connected, then uh, there's no voltage going through the front because this battery is all in series and this breaks the series halfway through. So anyways, you'll see more once we take it apart. Okay, so as you can see, a whole bunch of bolts. Uh, again, all 10 millimeter, nothing special about them. And I'm just gonna discard them. The only thing those do is hold the uh, top, like I guess it's some sort of composite fiberglass and plastic uh, to the steel um, base plate here. So keep in mind when this is in a volt, this actually is the basically the floor of the vehicle. The um, back seats, uh, would sit, the person sitting in the back seat would literally sit right here and right here a rocket sitting uh, facing forward so this would be forward in the vehicle. Did forget these bolts along the front. Oh. 
Okay, so now just lifts off. Did forget one thing on this once already, but forgot there are four Torx bit screws underneath this, or not underneath this, but around this. Um, attach this to the batteries. So Rocket's not a fan of the uh, impact, evidently. Wants to eat the tool. That's fine. You'll live. So now I've got those bolts loose, and this thing kind of just pops straight down. Okay, so here's the battery pack without its cover on. So basically all of your factory plugs and everything are gonna be up here. Got some water inlets down at the bottom. The battery management system uh, box is here. So all of these small little wires actually transfer to these plugs. These plugs go, uh, basically each individual wire goes to each individual cell so that it can manage um, individual charge level per cell. We also have uh, coolant lines that attach between each set here. So each set of cells has uh, an end plate basically and then coolant runs along the uh, edges inside the battery modules on both sides. The rear one here for packaging purposes, um, the, the center, not the center, but close to the center is where the coolant lines go in and out. Then they run either direction in the battery. So as I'm still kind of learning about how this whole thing works, basically I just want to be able to make sure that if I try to put this back together, um, I'm going to get it right. So what I've done on the other pack is I labeled these BMS connectors, uh, one through I think it's seven. Uh, here we've got A, B, the BMS here just kind of plugs into these uh, plastic connectors, C, and then we got D. E, sorry, E, F, and G. So this way, if I need to extend any of these or kind of uh, move them around, well, I'm definitely going to have to move the batteries around to get them to fit properly. Um, so I know where each one goes, so I'm not trying to uh, basically troubleshoot a system um, that I'm just honestly not super familiar with. I do know that these things send out data over the CAN bus and I should be able to um, interpret that using uh, an Arduino controller that I plan on using but at this point I'm not familiar with it just yet so it's kind of where we're at. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pull off the BMS and start taking these top plates apart uh, to give you another idea of how the wiring comes from the factory. Okay, so I do want to point out kind of one thing um, on this. So you see I've got the whole, the BMS and all of its harnesses. All of these little gray kind of Christmas tree looking things, they just plug straight into the tops of these. Um, you can spend a lot of time and, and mess with these and take them out the right way or 
They're basically a zip tie. It's pretty much one time use anyways. Uh, but I found that you just grab a hold and pull and none of them seem to break. They seem to be pretty reliable. But all the clips and connectors in this entire thing, they all have a double locking mechanism. So as it sits in there, this little white piece is pushed down. Like so. And to uh, remove it, you have to pull, pull up on it and then depress the little tab. Same goes through these little small black connectors, like so. So those actually go to uh, temperature sensors that appear to be, they're on the end of each set of cells here, or modules, however you wanna call it. Okay, so that's the BMS. And now that it's out of the way, I'm gonna pull off some of these upper uh, covers. Okay, so got all the um, plastic covers off. I uh, got a pile of them right here. Uh, I did take those off kind of to keep them in good condition. I do intend on reusing them. These, and the, one of the reasons is on top of all of these modules, these plates here, every one of them actually has voltage. So you can see the BMS connector and that ribbon cable is actually riveted to the top of each and every one of those modules. So each module basically alternates um, the way that it's uh, set in the pack. Um, so it's plus minus, plus minus, uh, all the way down. The same way as if you'd put you know, two double A's in a remote control. Uh, usually you're gonna have the plus and the minus connected uh, so that they're in series and you get more voltage, um, but the same uh, amp hours essentially. So this is this is basically it. Um, I'll show you what the other module over there looks like. Uh, just on the ends, it's pretty much the same thing. So Chevy does this kind of nice. Each one of these packs has um, a label on it. So this, you can actually see that there's kind of two sets put together. Um, and then the number of like individual modules, this is obviously this is less than this. And then up here you've got two of the smaller sets. And down here basically the sticker says that's 2.3 kilowatt hours for each of these two sets. Uh, 4.6 total is on that small or in the middle sticker. Uh, here 3.1 and 2.3 for a total of 5.4. And then on the back here, we've got 3.1 here, 2.3 and 3.1 again for a total of 8.4, or I think it's like 18, 18.5 kilowatt hours for the entire thing. Um, that's about it. Um, you know, obviously you still got some wiring that's got to come apart and that sort of thing. So again, just want to be real, real careful um, with all of this stuff. Uh, all this, basically everything that's metal in here, aside from uh, the frame itself, is electrified. Um, practice, you know, obviously very safe handling procedures whenever you touch this stuff. Um, you know, for the most part, all this you know, each module, it's only about 4.2 volts, so it's not a lot, but there is a decent amount of, uh, you know, amp hours avail available that, you know, could shock and hurt and potentially even kill you if you did the wrong thing. So remember, keep that in mind, and yeah, be safe. Um, they sell gloves specific for these. I've taken enough of them apart to know where you can and can't touch. Just make sure you don't uh, you know, drop anything metal on top of these, short anything out, um, or grab a hold of two metal posts at the same time uh, because you could be, con you know, creating part of the circuit yourself, uh, and that's that's not a good thing to do. So again, here's, you know, what they look like out of the pack. Um, nothing crazy, pretty straightforward. They're actually somewhat manageable in terms of weight, like this. Also, the whole thing weighs about 400 pounds, 420 pounds or so. 
uh, when it's all assembled. So there's you know a lot of weight, um, you know, hard to move around. I've got it on a pair of uh, you know skates that you'd normally put a uh, vehicle on. Each wheel and tire we sit on one, um, so it makes it easy to move around you know by myself. One last thing before I uh, you know shut this video down is they're held in by these brackets and more 10 millimeter bolts obviously. I plan on reusing this bracket setup. I plan on cutting up the the bottom piece and attaching or welding something along those lines um, to the frame of the car or to some brackets that I put in the frame of the car uh, and then using basically Chevy's yeah, basically use uh, Chevy's fastener system because um, I mean it seems to be a pretty robust and reliable um, section. What those pieces look like when they're off are just these little brackets. So again, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. And that's what I have for today. Um, the next update will probably be talking about the um, brake pedal or rather brake switch and the gas or accelerator pedal, I guess we'll call it. Um, those should be coming in this week, so we'll talk about those then. And in the meantime, questions, uh, leave them in the notes below or uh, you know, share this with your friends. Uh, just try and get awareness out on this sort of thing. Um, it's a pretty neat project so far and uh, you know, I'd like to see more of them out there.